Those who are still talking, can you please make your way to your seats? We're going to get started with some worship. Look, Chris is excited about that. Can you hear my guitar? Nine. A4, can you hear my guitar? Good. All right, I'm going to pray for us. Father God, we just thank you so much just for this beautiful day you've given us. And we just want to remember this time and use this time to worship you and to reflect and praise you, Father. We thank you again and we just really open up our hearts right now and just remember all the good things you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing, take my life. Take my life, I lay it down At the cross, where I am found All I have I give to you, my God Take my hands Take my hands and make them clean keep my heart in purity that i may walk in all you have for me Whoa, here i stand arms open wide Take my moments Take my moments And my days Let each breath That I take Be ever only For you, O God Arms open wide Oh, 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 oh. I am yours And you are mine Oh, 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 oh. Here I stand
like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of His wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory Then I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us how He loves us all. He is jealous. He is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of His wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us Sing that again. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us. Yeah, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves Yeah, He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves us And we are His portion so we are His portion, and He is our prize. Drawn to redemption by the grace in His eyes. If His grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. So heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss, and my heart turns to the inside of my chest. I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way that He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves. Sing that again. Yeah, He loves us. Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves Yeah, He loves us Oh, how 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 He loves Pray with me. God, we thank You so much just for this day. And we just praise You and lift up Your name. And thank You and we want to reflect and give back that love that You give to us, Father. 
Lord, you are our reigning king. You are merciful. You are just. God, we thank you so much just for your grace and how amazing it is just to stand in your presence before you. Lord, we just lift up this time to you. We pray that it is fully devoted to you 100%. Thank you so much again just for all that you've done. We truly praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's my first high five I've gotten while I've been up here. Thanks, man. Um, Welcome to the Campus Crusade for Christ weekly meeting. My name is Brock. Uh, We are a group of students who love people, love Jesus, and want to give everyone the opportunity to know him. Yes. Um, I want to start off with a mini story today, because I like stories, especially fun ones. So in my class, I'm a public relations major. Yeah, two people, and I love you guys. Um, But we were asked to, in public relations, you find companies or organizations that are having issues um, and you help them fix it so they look better in public. Um, And it's not like lying or hiding stuff, but that's kind of what you do. So I was supposed to find an example of someone who did the right thing by having something weird happen or bad happen and they just ignored it. Like a good example of people doing that. And I found it was NASA and it cracked me up because I guess in 1979 a satellite crashed into Australia, into a city, and so there's debris everywhere. And they were like, this is not cool. You know what? And so the mayor of that city fined them $400 for littering. And they said, you are not welcome here until you pay that fine. And NASA was like, what? And it like became this huge ordeal in Australia and like started hitting America and everyone was like making fun of it. And they sent like memos throughout the entire like organization like, okay guys, don't go to Australia, you're not allowed. <laughs> and like, Then uh, 30 years later, they called him up on it. Like a new mayor came in, and he's like, you know what? I will make sure NASA pays this fine. And they were just like, what? And so a radio uh, group down in California decided, you know what? Let's pay off this fine, people. And so in 2009, they paid off the fine. So now NASA's in the clear. But it cracked me up. I was like, "That's, that's funny. That's some good stuff. Don't worry. That story will tie in later. Um, So now announcements. So prayer and worship night will be May 31st. That is a Tuesday at Abilene. Yeah? Okay, so you might notice that there's these prayer sheets that you might be sitting upon or have moved to the floor, which is inappropriate. Um, But what the prayer team would like you to do is to fill those out. Um, If there's anything that you would like prayer for this summer, you don't have to put your name, and it doesn't have to be something that's happening this summer. Like if you just have a prayer request that you'd like answered or just for people to be praying for, Write it down, and the prayer team is going to pray over that throughout the summer. Like, they're not just going to be like a one done, boom, I don't don't care anymore. Like, they really want to take your prayer requests into consideration and be praying for this continually. So, like, if you really do have something and you just don't want your name on it, don't put your name, but really write the request and they'll be praying for you. Um, So I thought that was a really cool thing for them to be doing. And they're going to hand out, um, like, if you do want more people to pray about what's going on with you or you'd like other people to know, they're going to put it on a bulletin to hand out during the worship night and they'll... Um, other people will be praying for you too. So it's a cool thing. So utilize those sheets. And Peter, right here, will be collecting them in the back if you fill it out. So thank you, man. Um, <laughs> slow clap didn't start. Uh, okay, now you guys remember, Flamingo football is Saturday. What time? 3 p.m. 3.30. 3.30, I'm sorry. 3.30. And then Monday, there's a softball game at 2. All of us. It's a crew softball game. I don't know. More information in the back. (laughs) I would hope at a softball field. But now, continuing. Now, how many of you will be staying in the area this summer? What? Yeah, that's you. Okay, perfect. We have an opportunity for you guys to help us out this summer as orientation groups come in. It's called Project Pomona. And so what we'll be doing is as these students come in, we're going to give them information about what our group does and what we have been accomplishing throughout this past couple years and what our focus is on, which is God, Jesus, yeah. Um, 
And so what we'll be doing is hopefully like recruiting and getting information out so people know about our group. So when they come in, they have a community to be plugged into, let them know about our events for that first week of school. Um, and we'll be contacting them during that first week and prior to that first week. So um, that's what it's going to look like. There's also Bible studies we'll be having and other ways to uh, connect with each other so you won't be alone. Like if um, you enjoy the community we have um, and you're going to be here locally, you can still be a part of that community. So we're going to keep it going. Oh, yeah, and there's sign-up stuff in the back. So if you're interested in getting involved and keeping, keeping going, just sign up. We'll hook you up. All right? All right. So now I'm going to introduce our speaker. This is fantastic, because I've known her for five years, and she asked me to find something to say, and I couldn't think of anything, so I look like a total idiot. She's like, you know me, you, you've known me for five years, what, what, tell me something cool about me, and I'm like, <laughs> like, it was just miserable, I just felt stupid. But she did tell me that she's scared of Australia. I told you that would tie in later. And it's not just because of the fines, it's because of all the creepy things, like everything deadly is from Australia. Like, if you go there, you should just die. Like, that's what Australia's for. So she's going to come up, and her name's Carrie Lazenby. All right? Yeah. Hello. Okay, let's kick down the stand. That's a great idea. Um. Um, yes, I, I am kind of afraid of Australia, but I really want to go there, so, you know, I'll face my fear someday, maybe. <laughs> but really, everything dead lives there, like, everything dead, whoops, everything, like, that will kill you lives there, I just don't, I bet you the zombie apocalypse will start there. I'm going to pray because I'm really nervous. Normally it's like, if I had to come up here and sing, I'd be totally fine. (laughs) But coming up and talking is like terrifying. So, Um, Okay, so I'm going to pray. Lord God, I just thank you so much for a beautiful day, God, and I pray that you would just speak through me, and I pray that you would use um, what I've prepared to just really speak to these people, God. And um, I pray that it would be nothing of me, but it would be you, and that you would use this time. In your name I pray, amen. All right. So how do I? Does anyone know how to raise this thing up? Yeah. All right. Sorry. Okay. So um, as I was thinking through uh, topics to speak on to you guys, I just um, trying to think of another aspect of who Jesus is. I thought to myself, well, Carrie, what have you been learning, basically? And one topic came to my mind pretty quickly, and I was kind of nervous because it's a little personal, but it's okay. Um, And it's great because it actually kind of goes along with the last two topics that we've done the past couple weeks. And my topic is, um, Jesus is my portion. Yay! Okay. Um, And I'm going to tell you how it relates. So two weeks ago, the next slide, yeah. Two weeks ago, um, Rachel talked about Jesus is not my magic eight ball. And basically, how do I figure out what God's will is for my life? And um, how do I know that that's where, where I should go or what I should do? And last week, Aaron talked about Jesus' Thanksgiving dinner-ish. And um, like in light of his will for my life, Jesus is enough. And Jesus is fulfilling to, to fulfill that will in my life and stuff. And in me, Jesus is my portion. So within God's will, when things don't make sense or things don't go right, like what do you do? Like how do you deal with it? How do you come to the Lord? And is it okay to come to the Lord with your frustration? Yes. <laughs> and... Um, how would I do that? And, um, yeah, so over the past year, it's become really apparent to me that the Lord is though truly the one who really sustains us, is the one who really gives life and the one who keeps us going. And um, to be perfectly honest with you guys, this last year has probably been, like, the worst of my life. Like, just circumstances just really sucking and finding myself far more emotional than I've ever been in my life. Like, never been a crier before, but, you know, yeah. Now I am. (laughs) Great. Um, And just lots of life change that's happening. Like, I'm graduating this year, and um, it's really exciting, but really terrifying. Like, what's next, you know? And um, I don't know, and is the Lord going to use me? And in spite of all these things, what am I supposed to do? And um, But I'm not standing up here to tell you guys that life can be hard sometimes. 
um, I'm pretty sure that we all know that life is hard and um, we've experienced the fact that life just straight up sucks sometimes. <laughs> but um, I'm here to encourage you guys though and to tell some tell you guys some truths about like what the Lord has taught me in um, in just these times of trial and um, some truths that can just make life a little bit easier to handle. Um, so today we're going to be in Psalm 23, which I love. Um, I'll read it to you guys. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, so this is a really popular psalm. I think of like greeting cards and encouragement notes and that John Foreman song and all these things. But um, I know that for me, like I've listened to that song like hundreds of times. I really love that song. But after a while, like it's kind of, it kind of like lost its meaning to me of just like, um, I guess overexposure. You lose the content of what's actually being said. And I fail to actually hear the content that I'm listening to. And I don't find myself believing that God is my shepherd and I will not want. And um, like, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, like I will fear no evil. Like I forget those things. And um, this whole Psalm is just a really encouraging um, passage about how God just cares for his people and how God just loves his people. But um, I want to focus on in on verse four, because that verse has just been a really great comfort to me in my times of trial um, and darkness and confusion and stuff. And um, yeah, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Um, and I'm going to, like, kind of break it down into, like, three kind of chunks about just how to deal with, like, hard times and stuff. Um, so the first one is, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, um, hands down, you will face hard times. Like, life just sucks sometimes, and it's going to happen, and I guarantee you that. Um, like Ecclesiastes 3, like there is a time for birth and there's a time for death and there's a time for mourning and a time for rejoicing. Like there's going to be times that are hard and there's going to be times that suck, but in the midst of those times, like you still are called to walk with the Lord. Like, like yeah, so um, you will face hard times. Life isn't always happy sunshine rainbows and even though I really wish I could tell you that it was, it's not. And, um, like, right now, like, my valley of the shadow of death is, like, my family life. Like, things are really hard, and there's a lot of stress, and I'm finding myself in the midst of drama and situations that just, I feel like I shouldn't have to deal with. And I, I ask God why, and I don't understand how the Lord's going to use this in my life. And, um, but I have to trust that he will basically. And um, like your valley, it might not be as intense and as emotional as mine, but it could be like school stress or freaking out about what you're going to do for the rest of your life or just friends and family or conflict or sin issues in your life. It could be so many different things, but um, regardless, like we must walk through the valley. Like it doesn't say, even though I sit in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death, like it says, I walk through it. Like you have to walk through it with the Lord and that's kind of what you're called to do. Um, so the next part is, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Um, Romans 8, 31 and 32, I didn't write it down. Um, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for, all, for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Um, we serve, the God that we serve is the creator of the universe, mighty, powerful God, like, what do we really have to fear about, like, just times that are hard? You know what I mean? Um, and he will provide. Like, he is the most powerful God, the creator of the universe. And, like, will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Like, he gave up his son. He gave up, he gave us grace. He gave us life. Like, would he not, like, do you really not think, do you really think that he won't, like, get you through this situation that you're in? Um yeah, and even, like, in my valley, like, finding myself feeling like my family's falling apart and these people that are supposed to stay alongside you all the time and, like, love you regardless is, like, gone. So, um, but even in that, like, I find great provision from the Lord. Like, he has given me a beautiful family here of people that can really support me. And, um, yeah, um, 
can just push me to the Lord and really um, just love me regardless of like where I am or how I'm feeling. And um, like they grieve with me when I'm grieving and they rejoice with me when I'm rejoicing. And that is what a family's supposed to do. And so it's like, even in these times where it's like, I have nothing, like you do have something, like you have the Lord and he will provide for you. Um, and I know that because he's never failed me before, you know, and even though like I'm graduating and I find, I feel like oh, I'm losing this community and this family that of people that have supported me, like I have to trust and I know that the Lord will come through again because he's never failed me before. He's a faithful God who loves me and I have to believe that. Um, and the last part is your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Um, so this is kind of referring to, okay, like in Psalm 23, it like gives two analogies of God. Like he, God is a shepherd and God is a host. And this, um, kind of refers to God as a shepherd. And I thought of like, okay, your rod and your staff, those are the tools of a shepherd, but I didn't quite understand how they comfort us because I think of a rod and a staff and I think of like, spare the rod, spoil the child, like punishment kind of things. And I'm like, ah, how does that, I don't know how that's really supposed to comfort me. But um, just looking into it more, I looked into like what a rod and a staff are used for. And I just found like really, really great truth that I love. Um, And it speaks to two different aspects of God's love. It's protection and correction. And um, so basically the rod is just like a long stick and the, the shepherd uses it to protect the sheep from predators. Um, yeah, so protect the sheep from wolves and getting hurt and stuff. And then the staff is a long stick with like the curvy end at the top. And um, it's to pull a sheep back from wandering off or wandering into a dangerous situation. So basically like the staff, if, or if, um, if a sheep is like wandering into like a dangerous area, then the shepherd would like grab the staff and grab it by the hind leg and pull it back basically. Um, so how does this speak to, like, how is this comforting us that the Lord is, um, his protection and correction, how they comfort us? But realistically, like, the Lord is in control of those things. He is the shepherd and we are the sheep, and sheep are very stupid animals. Like, <laughs> they will eat themselves off of a cliff, or, like, if they, if a shepherd doesn't lead a sheep to water, like, it will thirst until it dies. Like, it will not go find water. Um, it will not go find food if it is hungry. Um, yeah. So he knows what is best. For, the Lord is our shepherd and he knows what is best for us. And in the midst of trial, I know that God ultimately is sovereign and that that particular trial must be vital to my growth, even if I don't see it now. Um, because I believe that he is in control and he is my shepherd. Um, so like in my life, some of like the worst pain I've ever felt basically is like heartache. I'm assuming that everyone can kind of relate to that. <laughs> but um, like in one particular occasion, I wanted to date this guy and he was like, we didn't date for many reasons, but um, I was really upset. Like, I asked myself why, and I asked the Lord why, and um, I was angry, and I hated the situation, and I was just broken, and um, I look back now, and I thank the Lord so much. Like, I just thank God, because, like, that pain that I was feeling then is nothing compared to the pain that I could have felt had I actually gotten into that relationship. And if you think about how, um, like, the the Lord uses, like, a shepherd uses a staff, like, the sheep being pulled back by the hind leg hurts. Like, that is painful. That's, I mean, that's not very happy feeling being, like, dragged by your leg somewhere. But, um, but think about it. Like, if the shepherd hadn't done that, then that sheep could have, like, fallen off of a cliff, basically, which would hurt a lot worse than being pulled by the leg. So, um, like, as far as, like, my current valley that I'm in, I'm still there, but I'm walking through it, and I encourage you guys to do the same. Um, yeah, and just something that, um, I want to, like, leave you with, um, I heard this from Brian Holland last summer, I think, I don't remember, but he said this, and it really stuck with me, and I want to, like, give it to you, basically, so, like, in the midst of trial, despite your feelings and your circumstances, what do you know, um, yeah, despite how you feel, what do you know, and, We've been exploring who Jesus is for, what, like a year? And we've gone through, every week we've gone through something, a new thing about Jesus and something that, um, and learning more about who he is. And I just, um, I want to ask you, like, do you really believe those things? Like, do you believe that God is sovereign? Do you believe that he is faithful? Do you believe that he loves you? Do you believe that he gives you grace, that he's life-giving? Like, do you believe these things? And how we respond in trial really reflects what we believe in our hearts about who God is. Um, 
And realistically, like your feelings shouldn't dictate your theology be what, uh, theology about what you believe about who God is. Um, yeah, and what you know to be true. Like your feelings shouldn't dictate those things. And um, I just want to encourage you to think about those things. Like, do I really believe that God is faithful? Do I really believe that God loves me? And in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this hard time, like, am I really going to walk in that and trust that that is true and trust that God is in control and trust that despite how I feel right now, that he is is powerful and he has a plan for it, basically. Um, and so, like, thinking about myself, like, what do I know in the midst of this trial that I'm in, this hard time that I'm in, and this valley that I'm in, what do I know? Like, I know that God loves me. I know that I'm justified before him. I know that he's powerful enough to free me from sin and deliver me from this trial. Um, I know that I am his child. I know that he is faithful and that I can trust him to provide what I need. Like, in, those, in the midst of those trials, like, I have to cling to those things, these truths that, that I know about God, because that's what gives me hope to be even pressed forward and walking through that valley. Um, yeah, so it's kind of just what I wanted to leave you with, and um, that's kind of all I had, and I'm going to pray, but yeah. Um, Lord God, I just, I thank you that um, you're a God who protects us and corrects us when we need it. God, I pray that you would... Um, really give us um, hope and strength to walk through these valleys that, that you place in our lives and trust that um, you will bring seasons of rejoicing after seasons of mourning, God. And um, I pray that we as, as Christians and we as believers or, or whatever, God, that we would really cling to the truths that um, we know about you, God, and we wouldn't let our feelings really dictate um, what we know about you. And I pray that you would just really um, teach us how to love you more in these times, God. And I just thank you so much. And I pray. Amen. Carrie is so much taller than me. Thank you so much, Carrie, for being vulnerable and talking about those things. Like, I don't know, I feel like that's a hard topic to talk on, like, through personal experience, because there's no way to go into it without hitting something legitimately emotional and serious. And, um, but the cool thing is, like she said, like, God is there taking you through the pain. Like, um, you know, rejoicing in pain doesn't mean, like, oh, thank you, God, I'm suffering. It's thanking God he's there with you while you're suffering. Like, that's the mentality of it. And um, he always is going to take you through that valley. And, you know, thanks, Carrie, for sharing that. We appreciate it. Now, time to get onto a lighter side. Back to announcements again. Recapping. Okay. So, do you guys even remember what I said? What is next Tuesday? Prayer and worship night at? Oh, yeah. And what are you supposed to fill out? Or recommended to fill out. You don't have to do anything. But they put a lot of time and effort in those things. And they would really like to be praying for you. So, you know, you could kind of slap them in the face by not filling it out. But whatever. <laughs> Just kidding. But Peter's going to be back there collecting them. Right? Remember that? Peter, stand up. Everyone look at that beautiful man. Go say hi. He's taken. Um, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> What's what's this weekend all about? Flamingo football and softball and just chilling. Three-day weekend. All those classes Monday, psh, no worries, right? But Tuesday comes back and good. So enjoy your three-day weekend. Those events are set up for you. Uh, bring something, guys, to tie your legs together just in case there's not enough equipment because... I know it sounds weird, but that's what Flamingo football is all about. You can't run. you got to hop around, so control those things. Um, now, Project Pomona. Yeah, it's all summer long here in Pomona. So if you want to be a part of it, sign up in the back. There's a sheet, and, yeah, a lot of the older students can talk to you about it. And people who have done it before, has anyone done it before? Raise your hand. Please go ask them about their experiences, and they would love to tell you about it. Okay? You're adjourned. Boom. Oh, yeah. We're going to go on a picnic right now. So if you didn't bring a lunch, you can get takeout and take it out and sit down in the picnic area.